Okay. Who, who of you are doing two languages at once? Wonderful. Not How many languages? Are uh, not no oh. any languages. Okay. First of all, you're actually doing three at once because you're doing English as well. I know that sounds stupid, but you really are. Who knows every word in English? Who knows every way to express yourself in English? And those of you who are doing one language, you're doing English as well. So you're doing two languages. It is difficult, but you've got to do it. It's something that you've just got to go out and do. It accesses parts of your brain that are just dormant, and when they get opened up, you have a new perspective on everything, even history, if languages aren't your thing. Uh, when you are doing them, utilize what is familiar to you. In my first semester last year, I was doing Latin, Greek, Spanish, and German. Now, they sound very different, but what I did, the way I thought about com combating it, is I went Latin and Greek, they're Indo-European, they're going to stick together. So I kept things like my cases, they're, they're quite the same. The tenses of the verb, the way they express themselves, those things are going to be the same. Latin and Spanish, both they're all, Spanish is a Romance language. You'd be surprised how, if you, if you do two semesters of Latin, you can read Spanish, I guarantee it. And uh, German and English. They're both Germanic languages. They have the same sort of sentence structure. In fact, German is easier to learn than English would be. German is kind of like a higher level version of English. No offense to us, but anyway. <laughs> so use what's familiar. There's things that are in your mind that you don't know are there yet, and you, will, you can access them while you're doing those two languages. Um, and always make connections. They're, the Greek, who knows the Greek word for I? Like I am. <laughs> Ego. Exactly. Who knows the Latin word for I? As in I am. Ego. It's the same word. Same root. Indo-European. It's there. Those connections are there. And now you know a word from Latin and Greek. Um, find links to modern languages as well. Don't stay within the ancient languages circle because you're an ancient historian. And that's a, that's a big point going into the modern languages. Uh, those of you who are Greek and learning ancient Greek, or those of you who are Italian and learning Latin, be willing to accept differences. Just because one language does one thing doesn't mean the other necessarily will. They are called ancient Greek and modern Greek for a reason. A lot has changed in that time. If someone came up to you and told you that your English was incorrect because it didn't sound like Shakespeare, that I'm sure you would feel like someone learning modern Greek and uh, sorry, it's a modern Greek speaker learning ancient Greek. You know what your language is, but ancient Greek is different. Things like that. So be willing to let things go. <laughs> uh, find a study formula and replicate your study technique with modifications onto different subjects. So if you've done Latin one year and you're, you've got that formula down, you used to write out your paradigms or you used to write out your flashcards, and then you go do hieroglyphs, which is completely different. Use that same formula if it worked for you, but modify it for hieroglyphs. Um, always devote equal time and don't favor one language. Uh, that's, that's a major thing because if you start to favor the one that you like, the other one will fall away. You'll stop doing as well in it. You'll start feeling bad about it. Even if you're not consciously thinking these things, and there's a big thing with learning languages, it's called efficacy, and that is your own personal feeling about how you're going to do. And if you don't devote time to it, your efficacy drops. You'll start feeling like, I'm going to fail this, and that's not what you want. You want it, if you devote the time to it, you'll find that you learn things, and you'll find that you'll start to think, wow, I really can do this language. I can do two, I can do three, and that's what we're looking at. That's what we're trying to foster here. Um, yeah, remember, don't panic. You've, you're already doing two languages, even if you're doing one ancient one, you're already doing two. Um, there's huge benefits. Uh, your grammar, even in your own like publications, your grammar will be much better. You'll know that you're supposed to write of which, not which dot 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 of at the end of the sentence and things like that. So there's a lot of advantages to persisting with languages. Uh, your and skills for analysis as well. To be able to deconstruct a Latin clause or a hieroglyph, things like that. When you're reading the ancient text, you'll find things that people reading the penguin will miss. So that's a real big point. Um, and with regard to the modern languages, just because it hasn't been done in English doesn't mean someone didn't do it in French or German or Italian. So think about it, these people live over there. So they have first-hand access to it and we need to be in touch with that. We're all the way in Australia, we need to keep up with them. So it's a really good idea 
to be in touch with those modern languages. That's my section done, so thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Paul. Amazing Chris's 100 top tips of memory. Um, and this is really important all these you know, memory tricks and, and study aids.